Panasonic has released another firmware update for the GH5. This is version 2.6, and as always, we anticipate any differences or hopefully improvements in the performance of the autofocus for video. So in this video, I'm going to go through a few different things that I did to test the performance of the one area mode and the face tracking mode because those are the two that I'm most likely to use and as a matter of fact I'm using face tracking right now and we'll go through the different settings of speed and sensitivity because I've found that that actually makes a pretty big difference uh, when you're shooting in certain situations especially with regards to how much it sort of pulses and hunts uh, for the focus uh, once it's even kind of locked on to something. So uh, without further ado, I'm going to go through these uh, tests and I'll just put on the screen what the different uh, settings were and I tried to replicate them somewhat closely each time and you can see the differences uh, as we go through uh, the various settings for speed and sensitivity. I'll go through face tracking eye or face and eye detection mode and also one area mode. Since those two are not only the two modes that I'm most likely to use, I'm also hearing that they are the two most commonly used modes for autofocus on the GH5 in general. So let's get to it. Starting with face eye detection mode with the autofocus speed set to zero and the sensitivity set to zero, the performance is pretty good, but for me personally I feel like it still pulses a little too much, especially when the subject is remaining very stationary. It seems like the autofocus starts to hunt around a little bit uh, when it doesn't need to. So that's something to look out for even though this might be a good starting point. Look for pulsing in the background. Look for pulsing in the background now. And a gradual transition back. And we can really see the worst case scenario when we turn the speed and the sensitivity both up all the way. Now this same problem with hunting and pulsing tends to happen even if the sensitivity is turned down when the speed is turned up. But in this case you just see the worst case scenario. Look for pulsing in the background. And looking for pulsing in the background from close. And a slow pull back. So after doing a lot of experimenting, I feel that negative three on the speed and plus one, maybe plus two on the sensitivity is probably my all around favorite settings for the face slash eye detection mode. This makes it sensitive enough to follow the subject a little better when coming towards the camera or moving back from the camera. Look for pulsing. Look for pulsing with a closer focus. And smoothness of transition. The speed being turned down a little bit keeps it from pulsing so bad in the background when the subject is sitting still. One area mode seems to perform a little bit better with the default settings of speed and sensitivity at zero than what we saw with the face eye detection mode. Look for pulsing behind me. Look for pulsing. Smoothness of transition. Object to face. Now even though it does perform a little better at those default settings in face eye detection mode, I still prefer to turn down the speed a bit and turn the sensitivity up just a bit in one area mode as well. Look for pulsing in the background. Look for pulsing in the background. Smoothness of transition back. Transition to and from 
objects placed in front. Now in these tests, I feel like maybe I have the size of the box for the one area mode slightly larger than it should have been because it didn't perform quite as well as I would expect when trying to grab focus on the little aperture light remote. So it might be helpful to remember that the size of that focus box will have an impact on how well the one area focus performs when pulling focus from a near to a far subject and back. And just like the results that we saw with the face eye detection mode test, the one area mode suffers greatly when the speed is turned all the way up and the sensitivity turned up as well. Look for pulsing. Look for pulsing. Smoothness of transition. transition from object. By turning the speed of the autofocus up, it does tend to track a little better for subjects that come towards the camera or move away from the camera. However, the trade-off for all the pulsing and hunting is just not worth it. Now, I also wanted to see how the autofocus would perform in a larger room where I could walk to and from the camera and then out of frame and back into frame and with a little bit more challenging light because the exposure is dramatically different uh, when I was closer to the camera and closer to my key light versus when I was further away and then falling back into the background lighting. I did a pretty extensive set of tests with the speed and sensitivity adjustments, but I'm only including sort of a best and worst case scenario type set here just so you get a feel for how it's responding when you turn those up or down. For these two tests, I put my GH5 on the Ronin S and then I use the app to remotely control the gimbal with the virtual joystick. Here I'm using face eye detection to move from me to the painting. And here I'm using the one area mode with the focus box set to a size just a little bit bigger than my eye to move from me to the painting and back. So after experimenting with the autofocus on this new firmware update for the last day and a half or so, I've really come to the conclusion that there's not a discernible difference in the autofocus performance from the last couple of firmware updates. So version 2.3 and 2.4 were the two versions where I really saw the biggest difference in performance is really noticeable. But in this case, it seems to be the same. I think they've really just added some features and some compatibility with different uh, external devices and lenses and so forth. So those things are worth having. And it's always a good idea just to keep updating your camera to whatever the current uh, firmware is anyway. 
but don't expect the, the uh, autofocus to perform radically differently at this point. Now, I would like to point out that for me personally, I find that when the sensitivity is uh, turned up a little bit and the speed is turned down, that the camera tends to perform a little better. The uh, autofocus tends to be a little bit more reliable, especially with the speed turned down. If the speed is up too high, it tends to do a lot of pulsing and hunting for some reason, and I really would have thought it was the other way around. I would have thought the sensitivity would have caused that, but in my experience, it's been the speed adjustment. If that's set too high on the autofocus, um, it tends to uh, really act up. So uh, just give that some thought and maybe go back and look at some of my tests and see if you think the same thing. And as far as that goes, I would certainly love to hear what your opinion is on the new firmware and just the, the autofocus in general of this camera. And if you've got some favorite settings for certain circumstances, let me know. I'd love to hear it. If you've got some questions, leave that in the comments. And if you like this video, click like, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next one.